Okay, so good everyone. Welcome back to another Bush Creek fly tying tutorial. So in this uh, this video, we're going to be doing uh, this little fly, which is a uh, one hackle uh, damsel nymph, just a little lightweight pattern, little little thing to throw around there, and um, it's pretty straightforward. It's not terribly difficult, and we'll get on into it. So the hook I'm using for this is a uh, Murado D21 barbless in size 12. I tie this in both 12 and 14s, just to give you something that's a little bit smaller. So we'll get that into the vise. The uh, the next thing I'm using is um, the thread I'm using is waxed Semperfly thread in uh, 80. Uh, this is brown olive, uh, you know, olive brown, something along these lines. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to come back about two, a, a third of the way behind the, the eye and catch on my thread and just run that down all the way down to the bend just to create a base for the for the uh, for the marabou trim away the waist there and then I'm going to uh, just come back up open turns to where I tied in the thread so the tail for this is just olive marabou um, I'll tie this in both olive and a sort of a brown olive as well but you can mix up the colors whatever sort of works for you you don't need a lot you're not really tying like a big sort of woolly bugger or anything you just want enough to give it a bit of a kick so so several hurls of marabou maybe a dozen hurls of marabou depending on how fine it is and i'm just going to tear that away from the from the stem and then from here i'm just going to trim up the ends Get rid of some of that waste and tidy up, screw up the ends. And I'm going to catch that in basically at the tip where I've finished my or started my thread, I should say. And just holding the marabou just to keep it steady. I'm just going to catch that in and tie that in all the way down to the bend. So the rib for this is uh, is fine wire. I'm using a, like a uh, a light green fine hens um, colored wire and I'm just going to catch that in at the, at, the, at the end and then secure that wire down as I come back to where I've started my thread just push that wire out of the way get that out of the way so the body of this fly is is formed out of a hackle so the hackle I'm using is um, French partridge or chucker dyed olive. And what I'm after here is, is fiber lengths that, that are about, about the length of the shank, I guess. So when I tie it in, they extend past the bend of the hook. Now you don't need a lot, but um, it's a good way to get rid of some of the smaller, smaller um, part, oh, sorry, I should say smaller feathers if you like. Something about that. I'll trim away the, some of the fluff at the back end there. Come in with my hackle pliers, just catch the tip, and I'm just going to expose and draw back those fibers. Now, some of those ones at the back are really sort of pushing it and becoming too long, so I'll get rid of those. Go again, just to make sure I get the, the length that I want. I don't want the fibers hanging too far back, otherwise, they start to impede the action of the the marabou. So, I suppose the tip, and I'm just going to come in and trim that away so I've got a small little triangle there. And I'm going to catch that in directly behind, uh, directly in front of where I started the thread. And then with my hackle pliers, I'm just going to hackle this partridge on. Same way you would do as if you were doing a soft tackle. Three or four turns, whatever you got, sort of works, and then a few turns to capture that thread. Come in and trim away the stem. And then just so that I don't bounce things around, I'm just going to stick a quick half hit or a quick hitch in there to secure the, the thread to the shank of the hook. Okay, so. With this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up my wire so it's vertical, and then I'm going to draw all the hackle fibers back 
and I want sort of a reasonable even spread around the shank. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, but as long as you get a reasonable coverage all around the shank. And then holding the wire vertical, I'm just going to pass it and do two turns at the back where I've secured the wire. And then just in open turns, I'm going to about a millimetre wide, I'm just going to come up and rib that feather all the way back to where I've tied it in. And then capture that wire a couple of turns and just wear off the excess wire. So that's the body of our fly done. So the next step then is just to bring forward and I'm going to secure in the eyes which are just bead chain eyes. So what I find it useful to do so that things don't slip around is once I've found a position that I want which is probably about two or so millimeters back from the eye I'm just going to come in and do a half hitch or a hitch with the thread just to lock that thread in that location because then I find it easier to tie the beads on because I come backwards so just holding my beads I'm just going to come over the turn a couple of turns and then secure those in place as you would normally with, with bead eyes um, with several turns just to make sure they're all sort of locked in. Apologise, my fingers probably getting in the way, but I just want to make sure that bead sitting in the right orientation. So several turns just to lock the bead down into position. Once I'm happy that it's that it's in its location. I'm just going to come back with the thread a little bit to the start of the body and put a small collar, I guess you could say, of dubbing. Now I'm just using brown olive possum. Um, you could use whatever sort of dubbing you choose, hair's ear or something along these lines. Or a little bit of squirrel perhaps. And I'm just going to do a small, tight dubbing noodle here. And form just a bit of a collar behind the eye, just in like this. So the next step then is to do the, the hackle, which will start to represent the legs. So again, I'm back to another partridge, a uh, little small one. I don't need really long legs, and I don't need a lot of them. So I'm going to pull this fairly way, a fair way back. Get rid of some of that excess material. So I've just got something that's got uh, legs that are probably maybe I guess the, the length of the shank at, at most. And I'm going to come in with my hackle pliers and just catch the tip and draw those fibers back. Exposing that point. Come in with the scissors and just trim that away leave myself a small little triangle to catch on. I'm going to catch that in at the top with two or three turns and then come back with my hackle pliers and then we're just going to hackle this now. You get to a little bit problematic but in essence you want to hackle it the same way you would do a soft hackle. So draw those fibers back and then essentially couple of turns, two or three turns, whatever you got on the feather, directly behind the eye. I'm going to come over and I'm going to catch that stem in with a couple of turns, trying to avoid all these fibers going forwards. Um, we'll pull them back. And then I'm just going to bring that stem across the top of the eyes and catch it directly behind or directly in front of the eyes with a turn or two as well just to help lock that stem in. From here, just trim away the rest of that stem and I'm going to come back and just tidy up a little bit here. Uh, those feathers are sort of, those hackles have sort of driven forward. So get them in back behind the eyes. Right, from here it's back to the dubbing. Same dubbing as I used before. 
and I'm just going to create a fairly decent noodle, nice and tight. I don't want it too bushy here. I just want to sort of build up the head around the eyes. So we'll go with that and we'll see how we go. Bring that forward. And then so it's a turn or two behind the eyes and then it's just this figure eight effect in and around the eyes. Just making sure that you build up around the head. And then once you're happy with that, straight in behind the eye and tie it off. Just return some whip finish. Another couple just to be sure. Secure that thread, trim all the way. And then from here you can come back and you can pinch out the marabou to the length you want. I usually go for one to one and a half times the length of the, the, the hook. And um, so somewhere in there, and just pinch that away. Just tidy up those ends a little bit. And that is a one hackle damsel. You get the marabou kick for a little bit of movement and a bit of action, and then these hackle fibers just start to represent the legs of a damsel with the bead eyes. Nice thin profile and uh, a little bit of movement, a little bit of shape. And that's the one hackle nymph. So hopefully, you find that useful. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye, Mike.